Assalamualaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Uh, sorry we're running a little late as usual. So I think I, I think that we're going to get started usually every day sometime between 3 and 3.20 at my time. So uh, it just depends on how quickly we can get the kids distracted um, and I can make it to my office if I'm running some sort of errand or something of that sort. So I apologize for being late once again. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So we're on uh, day 23 and just 23 and uh, subhanAllah, you know, it's it's amazing because we just came out of the 23rd night um, of Ramadan and I don't know about you all, but it was a very peaceful night. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that it was, if it was Laylatul Qadr, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from all of us and that if uh, anyone fell asleep or did not get to observe the night as they hoped to have observed it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them the full reward uh, for their intention. Of course, we've still got the 25th night and the 27th night and the 29th night ahead of us and all of these other nights. Uh, so in any case, inshallah ta'ala, we'll catch it and we'll be rewarded for it. Um, so in the 23rd juz, we're continuing now in Surah Yasin. Um, and it particularly starts at verse 28 of Surah Yasin. Now, we left off, obviously, with uh, the messenger of the messengers uh, who was killed, who called his people to guidance. And he was killed because they did not find his message to be appealing and they got sick of him preaching essentially. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning to us, this man as he's killed, being raised up, being told to enter paradise and saying, Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun. Oh, how I wish my people would know. Bima ghafaradi rabbi wa ja'alni min al-mukrameen. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven me and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me uh, from amongst those that were honored. Uh, that were given that great reward. So the care that he had for his people, um, you know, even as they killed him, and this is basically the character of a messenger and the character of a messenger of a messenger, i.e. a da'ya, um, that they care, they care for their people. They want goodness for their people. And they hate to see their people in, in, in pain or suffering in this world or in the next. So guidance is for their own good, right? You see yourself as as a caretaker of society, as a caretaker of mankind. And <clears throat> obviously that comes in various capacities. It comes in the capacity of providing, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, care in the physical sense and in the um, emotional sense and so on and so forth and being there for people and being of service to mankind. But also we see that, um, you know, delivering a message, um, you know, which, which gives uh, hope in the hereafter and which gives a, a sense of longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting people to their Lord, that's also a means of service to mankind. Da'wah is service to mankind as well. So in one sense, you are to serve people in the worldly sense. In another sense, you are to serve them in the akhirah sense, right? By connecting them to that which will give them happiness in the hereafter as well. And in this world, um, by giving a sense of purpose and so on and so forth. So that's the way that the last juz ended. The rest of Surah Yasin, and in fact, this juz uh, focuses on the resurrection. So it's Meccan Quran. Oh, everything here that, that's in this juz of Juz 23 is Meccan Quran. And it's focusing on the people being resurrected. And it's focusing on the, uh, the, the, the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very typical. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. <coughs> it's one of the uh, <laughs> downfalls of going live is that you're going to hear me sneeze and cough and all those types of things. So anyway. This is typical Mecca Quran to focus on uh, the hereafter and the resurrection. But here, you know, this juz has a very regretful tone. Um, it's a tone, uh, or, or you know, of of, uh, of of remorse. It's a tone of if only they would have listened to their prophets. If only they would have listened uh, to their to their messengers. If only they would have listened to their messengers. If only they would have listened to their prophets. Then they would not have been in a miserable situation. So they should have listened to those that cared for them, that, that called them to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance, and they asked nothing of them in return in, the, in this world. So the way, Surah Yas, the way that this just starts off, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ 
and we did not send down upon his people after him any soldiers from the heaven, nor would we have done so. In kanat illa sayhatan wahida fa idahum khamidun. So you're going to see a sayha. It was not but one shout, and immediately they were all extinguished. Uh, sayha, which is the the shout, right? Which is the the sudden shock, the sudden blow, uh, is going to be mentioned a few times in Surah Yasin, right? This idea of a sayha, the shout that would that would cause all of us to die, a shout that would cause us to be resurrected, the blowing in the horn, and so on and so forth. This is something that's going to be repeated throughout the rest of Surah Yasin and in the beginning of uh, of this juz. So Allah subhanahu wa says, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad, ma yatihim min rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un. You know, so so in the previous juz, we had the messenger expressing regret. Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun, I wish my people would know uh, the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showered upon me and the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given me um, you know, uh, has given me what, what you know everything that I uh, that I expected from him and, he, uh, him, and he fulfilled this promise to me. And I wish my people would also attain salvation. Here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in verse thirty, "Ya hasratan ala ibad." What a shame for mankind! What a shame for the people! Ma yatihim rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzion. Never did a messenger come to them, except that they used to mock that messenger. So what a shame for mankind, what regret for mankind, that they did not pay attention holistically, collectively, to the messengers that were sent to them by their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once again, you have in verse 49, مَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَ uh, They are not, you know, they, they await only but a single sayha. Once again, a shout, right? تَأْخُذُهُمْ وَهُمْ يَخَصِّمُونَ It will take them, it will overtake them while they are disputing. So while people are still disputing over the nature of the hour, while people are still disputing with their messengers, while people are still disputing over, you know, whether this message is true or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that it will just be one slayha, one shout, and then suddenly everyone will be seized even as they're in the middle of their disputes. So obviously what this refers to is that the resurrection comes, on, comes without any warning, right? Uh, we have warning signs, but once the resurrection comes, it comes and it takes people by surprise. So it's just like that, and subhanAllah, the people are arguing, the people are disputing, and so on and so forth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allows it all to end. And you can imagine, you know, subhanAllah, when there are people that are, you know, that die a sudden death, sometimes in the middle of conversation, and so on and so forth. So it's a quick, you know, a, a quick overtaking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that Allah mentions here. And so in verse 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِرُونَ And suddenly the trumpet will be blown. So Allah mentions the second blow. And behold, from the graves they will come out quickly to their Lord. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions now that the, the blow came and suddenly everyone was taken away. And now another blow and everyone rises from their graves. And imagine the sight of everyone rising from their graves to be resurrected and to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا مَنْ بَعْثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ, مَا وعد الرَّحْمَنُ وَصَدَقَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ And they will say, Woe to us who woke us up from our sleeping place. And the reply will be to them that this is what the Most Merciful had promised and the messengers uh, told the truth. وَصَدَقَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ So subhanAllah, you, you, know, you can combine these two scenes together. On one hand, people are overtaken by the blow when... They're, they're, they're still disputing over whether or not this was the truth and they're still arguing and so on and so forth. So on one hand, it's, they're in the middle of that argument and they're taken. Then they go into that realm of al-barzakh. They go into that, that, that middle realm, that transition, where the people live between this dunya and between the akhirah and the experience of the akhirah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to experience. So some people's graves are chambers of hellfire and some people's graves are gardens of paradise. So they are in their punishment, they're being punished in, in Adab al Qabr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that with this blow, they suddenly rise up from their graves. And when they see the horror of the Day of Judgment, they would think they were sleeping. You know, subhanAllah, they would suddenly forget all of the punishment that they were going through in their graves. And they see the horror of the Day of Judgment and they say, Ya waylana man ba'athana min marqadina hadha. Suddenly they're standing up out of their graves. And they're looking around and they're seeing the scene and they're saying, who woke us up?
from our sleep, and the response comes, هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ الرَّحْمَانِ This is what the Most Merciful was promising you the entire time. وَصَدَقَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ And the messengers were truthful. So the blow took them while they were disputing, and when the blow came and they rose back up to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, it, is, it is said to them that this is what was promised to you um, all along. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again says, إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً It is just one shout. فَإِذَا هُمْ جَمِيعٌ لَدَيْنَا مُحْضَرُونَ And suddenly they are all brought up before us. They are all standing in front of us. SubhanAllah. Allah mentions to us in Surah Al-Muzammal, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جَمَعْنَاهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Or I'm sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, فَكَيْفَ تَتَّقُونَ إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ يَوْمَ يَجْعَلُ الْوِلْدَانَ شِيبًا That a young baby, right, a baby would see the scene of the Day of Judgment and the, the, the hair of that baby would turn gray. So you can imagine a person who knows that they were, um, you know, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they know that they did not uh, follow the guidance of the messenger that came to them. They know that they did not believe and they know that they were aggressive, in fact, towards the messengers that came to them with the truth. You can imagine then what they have to fear. If the baby, if the baby's hair turns gray, because, you know, because of the horror, even though the baby has nothing to worry about, right, in terms of its own accountability, what about the person who has something to worry about because they did not follow uh, the guidance that came from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? So in kanat illa sayhatan wahida, it is only one shout, and then suddenly they are all um, standing up in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, and you know, and and everyone meets their, um, <coughs> everyone meets their uh, meets their creator in that sense. The next surah, Surah Safat, is the lines. So, what does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mention to us, by the way, of, on the day of judgment, that even the angels would be arranged in Safat. So, even the angels who do not, you know, have anything to worry about. Right, because the angels did not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, they were incapable of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scene of the day of judgment, um, when the people come and they, they, they line up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are arranged in their rows, human beings, animals, angels, jinn, and so on and so forth. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the angels. And the angels who are busy in their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, busy in their glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentions the jinn who are trying to, you know, the jinns that, that, that try to steal the news from the heavens. So everyone is trying to figure out, uh, you know, the angels just prepare themselves by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as do the righteous believers. And some are trying to steal the news from the heavens and so on and so forth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discuss, discusses, um, you know, just some of the various aspects of, um, of, of, uh, of resurrection this idea that it is not difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect um, mankind once again. And Allah mentions to us the, con the, the conversations of the people of hellfire, the conversations of the people of paradise. So the people of paradise being on their thrones, uh, facing one another, uh, drinking, from their, drinking from the wine that's being passed around in Jannah and so on and so forth. So Allah mentions to us now the conversations. Now in Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the hour comes while people are arguing with one another and disputing the truth. And then they stand up and they're brought back and resurrected. And this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifest now. So now this is post the day of judgment. The people in paradise speaking with one another. The people in hellfire uh, speaking with one another. And subhanAllah, you have one of the most interesting conversations in the Quran in verse 50. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ That people, you know, they, they go around, you go looking for your relatives, you go looking for your friends, you go looking for your family members in Jannah. Everyone's trying to find their, their, their companions to celebrate in Jannah, right? That we made it, alhamdulillah. And so people go around approaching one another, inquiring of one another. Uh, and of course, there's no hardship or there's no sadness in Jannah, but you know, you're just trying to find out who's here, right? Who's here? Um, so subhanAllah, you ask about one another and you, and, you, and you start looking for one another. You start looking for your friends. You start looking for your parents you and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَقْبَلَ So they start to meet with one another. قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينٌ So one of them says, you know, I remember I had a friend on earth. I remember I had a friend in the previous life. 
يقول أئنك لمن المصدقين and he said to me are you really amongst those that, that think this is true that take this seriously are you really taking this stuff seriously now subhanallah surah yaseen the disputes are taking place and then they rise up and هذا ما وعد الرحمة وصدق المرسلون so the, the, the prophets were truthful all along so يقول أئنك لمن المصدقين now this, this man in Jannah is remembering his friends in the world saying to him do you really think he's telling the truth subhanallah the same words are used. Do you think that once we die and we become dust and bones, that we will be brought back um, to life? That we will be given a sense of permanence? So the man said, um, would you care to come look with me? Would you care to come find this friend with me? So he's telling his, his company in paradise, do you want to come look for this person in hellfire, or you want to go see where this person is, so that we can find him, this person that used to argue with me and dispute with me. So this man goes looking for his friend, and there is a place in paradise where a person could see some of the inhabitants of hellfire, so the oppressed could see their oppressors, for example, in hellfire. So this person goes, in some way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows him this man that used to mock him and argue with him and so on and so forth in the middle of hellfire. And he says, you know, by Allah, you almost got me. You almost got me. Meaning, subhanAllah, here I am in Jannah, there you are in hellfire. I almost fell for your argument. And I almost ended up in the same place that you are right now. You almost ruined me. You almost got me. وَلَوْلَا نِعْمَةُ رَبِّي لَكُنْتُ مِنَ الْمُحْضَرِينَ And had it not been for the grace of my Lord, I would have certainly been amongst those who were in hellfire as well. So subhanAllah, it's the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessing of Allah that He guided me, that He chose to guide me, um, even though you were arguing with me, and even though you were putting forth you know, a convincing argument that this is not the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, Alhamdulillah الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّ لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ that we praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guided us to this and had he not guided us to this then, then, then we would have been in absolute destruction so this person he says you know had it not been for the grace of my Lord then I certainly would have been in the same situation as you then he says you know are we really not going to die anymore are we really subhanAllah it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful um, you know, it's a beautiful uh, realization, a recognition in paradise. Like, is the test really over? Do we really not have to go through this anymore? Do we really not have to go through the mockery anymore or the uncertainty or whatever it may be? Are we really not going to die anymore? Except for our first death and we're not going to be punished because once you get to Jannah, you don't get out. It's not like you can party too hard in Jannah and get thrown out of Jannah into hellfire. Once you're in Jannah, you're in Jannah. Right? So, you know, is, it, is this really happening right now? Is this really the only death that we're going to have? Am I really not ever going to have to worry about any uncertainty anymore or ever being punished anymore? So, So the man says, verily, this is supreme success. This is the ultimate success. This is the great attainment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for that ending, let those who work, let those who want to seek salvation, seek salvation. So that's what you're working for. You're asking yourself, is it worth it to be putting myself through all this sacrifice and prayer and worship and whatever it may be and selflessness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world? It absolutely is. So you should be working for it and you should be seeking it as well. And uh, and this is the, 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 the crux of Surah Al-Safat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, um, Nuh alayhi salam, he mentions to us Ibrahim alayhi salam, um, and he mentions to us the sacrifices in particular of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So subhanAllah, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For that ending, let those who work, work. You see it with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah mentions his sacrifice and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his sacrifice um, uh, worth it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the, the Prophet Ilyas alayhi salam, uh, Lut alayhi salam, Yunus alayhi salam, and so on and so forth. And the way that Surah Al-Safat ends is it tells the Prophet 
anhum, but to, to leave uh, the, the, the mockery of the disbelievers and instead to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are not in delusion. So what you are calling to is real and it will come to pass. So don't pay too much attention to the insults and to the mockery um, of those that are, that, are, that are mocking you, but instead focus on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for the believers and indeed it will come. The next surah is Surah Sa'd. So Surah Sa'd uh, continues in this entire, in this, in the same, um, you know, in, in the same uh, rhetoric, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the destruction of the arrogant, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala then tells us about the tests of the prophets. So Allah tests in two different ways. Allah tests with hardship, or He tests with ease. So Allah mentions the test of Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam with the great kingdom. So there's quite a bit of detail in Surah Sa'd of the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam, his fine horses, the, the jinn under his command, the palaces. When Sulaiman alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi khirli wa habli mulkan la yanbaghi li ahad min ba'di. Oh Allah, forgive me and give me a kingdom uh, that, will not, that, that, that did not belong to anyone before and will not belong to anyone after me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these things. And then we find the story of Ayyub alayhi salam. So subhanAllah, it's uh, Ayyub alayhi salam, one of the descendants of Ya'qub alayhi salam. So he's one of the prophets of Bani Israel. Uh, you know, he has a different story than Sulaiman. Sulaiman alayhi salam was given the kingdom and the kingdom stayed with him. Ayyub alayhi salam was given, the king, was given kingdom as well, though not to the level of Solomon, not to the level of Sulaiman alayhi salam, but he was given, you know, the, the wealth, he was given, uh, you know, mansions, he was given... Uh, lots of children, lots of servants, lots of livestock, all types of things. So Ayyub alayhi salam was a prophet that also lived in, in Yusur. He lived in ease. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tested him severely. Which shows you that, that for some people, subhanAllah, you know, the, 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 the ni'mah will stay for them. And for some people, the ni'mah would be taken away. But the ending is the same if they both turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the one who... Who, who maintains that ni'mah, who maintains that blessing, remains grateful, then the ending is the same. And if the one whose ni'mah is taken away from him, whose blessing is taken away from him, turns back in patience, then the ending is also um, the same. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ayyub. Remember our servant, Ayyub alayhi salam, Job. Uh, when he called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Indeed, the shaytan has afflicted me with hardship and torment, meaning I'm going through a lot, a lot of distress. Um, the scholar, the tafsir of this ayah, by the way, uh, which, is, which is hardship or distress, uh, the ulama mentioned that that's the loss of health. So, Allah, so, so Ayyub Islam was tested with the loss of health. And then وعذاب, what he meant by torment, he meant by the loss of his wealth. So I've been tested with the loss of health. I've been tested with the loss of wealth. I've been tested with the loss of children. His entire family, was his, all of his children, subhanAllah, were taken away from him. So Ayyub alayhi salam, Job, who was tested with mighty, mighty, mighty tribulations and tests. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, told him, Urkud uh, that, that to, to strike the ground with your foot and that a spring, a cool bath and drink would come out for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ أَهْلَهُ And we granted him back his family. وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ And we, and we doubled uh, the amount of, of children that he had before. رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَذِكْرَى لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ As a mercy from us and a reminder for those of understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions um, the, 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 uh, the, the blessing of Ayyub alayhi salam or the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw him through his difficult time and the patience that Ayyub alayhi salam maintained. Only calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inni masani al dur that I have been struck with, with, with affliction, wa anta arhamur rahmin, and you are the most merciful of those who show mercy, that it's shaitan that, that, that afflicted me, and so on and so forth. So the way that a person is to respond when they are struck with affliction, and the way that a person is to respond when, they are when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with ease. So you have... The comparison uh, between Sulaiman alayhi salam and Ayyub alayhi salam, both of them extremely, um, you know, relevant to us. And then finally, you have um, at the end of Surah Sa'd, 
interestingly enough, subhanAllah, so, so obviously there are a lot of um, prophets that are still being mentioned, but you have almost a response of sorts to Surah Yasin, which is in the same juz, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in verse 86, قُلْ مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُتَكَلِّفِينَ Say, O Muhammad وسلم, that I do not ask you of a wage for this, nor am I of the mutakallifin, those who uh, fabricate things or those who are pretentious. This, this, um, subhanAllah, this, this particular ayah, if you remember in Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the messenger of the messengers, meaning the da'iyah that's calling to the messengers. And he says, اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا Follow those who are not asking you for a wage. وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And they are guided. The Prophet ﷺ is being told here to say now, مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ I'm not asking you for a wage. I'm not asking you for kingdom. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for fame. I'm not asking you for anything. Right? I'm not fabricating for the sake of gaining anything in this world. And one of the proofs of the, of the, of the prophethood of Rasulullah ﷺ is that the Prophet ﷺ did not get richer by this message. He did not gain anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that or he did not gain anything from the people that would have compromised his message. And the Prophet ﷺ, if anything, with the message that came to him, he he lost wealth, he lost family, he lost health. So the Prophet ﷺ is likened more to Ayyub alayhi salam, right? That I did not ask you for anything. Look, I was already a respected noble man in Mecca. I had money, I had family, I had the Meccan dream, right? I, I, I'm not asking you for anything. The fact that the Prophet ﷺ maintained a consistency throughout those 23 years of only getting, you know, of only suffering more and sacrificing more is a proof of his prophethood. Now you could say that in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ maybe had this plan, but in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ was offered wealth and he was offered the kingdom in return for sacrificing his message but he still maintained that that diligence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he still maintained that that integrity and did not accept anything that would compromise his message so you could say well in Mecca he was still poor he was still trying to prove himself but well, what about in Medina in Medina the prophet sallallahu only got poorer and his his living circumstances only became more difficult so even at the height alayhi salatu wassalam, of his rule. And when he had the entire region under him, he still did not have two meals a day. He still lived in, in his tiny hujurat. He still lived the life of asceticism, alayhi salatu wassalam. And the Prophet وسلم, still exercised patience. So, he, so he's being told to say, I never asked you for anything. I'm not asking you to sacrifice anything for me. I'm not asking you to give me anything. I'm not trying to get rich off of this message. I'm not trying to get famous off of this message. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my mission. So subhanAllah, it's just like uh, what comes to us in uh, Surah Yasin, uh, the mention of those uh, the mention of those men, or, or the mention of that messenger of the messenger saying, listen, these people are not asking you for anything. They're only asking you to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your own good. Uh, lastly, Surah Al-Zumar. And we're going to talk more about Surah Al-Zumar uh, tomorrow. Uh, but Surah Al-Zumar, um, you know, speaks about uh, the, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It reminds us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing us from our humble uh, roots. So it sort of maintains that theme of remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from nothing. And we'll see in the end of Surah Al-Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focusing on the believers taking their place in paradise. And, uh, and, and, and on the other hand, unfortunately, those taking their place in hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls to us with a message of hope and a message of repentance, uh, showing us that it's not too late. And that's very powerful, subhanAllah, that the transition is going to be that way because this juz, in particular, juz 23, is talking about the after effects. So the next juz will focus on the fact that it's never too late to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll stop there for today. And tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll get into the details of Surah Al-Zumar. Uh, which 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 continues into Juz uh, 24. Jazakumullah khairan. The charity that I want everyone to give to today. Uh, so alhamdulillah, the first day we had Muhsin, uh, which is the charity that we started the Muslims um, understanding and helping special education needs. 
We're almost at our goal of $20,000. You could go to, inshallah ta'ala, the, uh, the link that was placed in the, on, the first, on the 21st night, so two days ago, in the comments, inshallah ta'ala, and please help us reach the $20,000 goal. Yesterday, we posted uh, pious projects to build uh, wells in Mali, which is a wonderful project, mashallah, tabarakallah, uh, to help the people there in Mali. And today, inshallah ta'ala, uh, it's my project USA. So I'm actually going to put this in the, in, the, in the comments. And it's an organization that's dedicated here in the United States to stopping human trafficking and sex trafficking. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, unique effort. And that's what I'm trying to shine light on some of the projects that don't usually get attention. And that's one of those efforts that doesn't usually get attention. Uh, so it's a good organization, mashallah, that's doing great work to com to combat human trafficking. So I'm going to ask you all, inshallah ta'ala, to also donate to that, just to keep in the spirit. Every one of these last 10 days, 10 nights, inshallah, make sure that you're giving something for the sake of Allah. So jazakum Allah khairan, inshallah ta'ala, I will see you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.